Sim here on a Wednesday morning on BBC Wiltshire. I hope you are well today. Now, yesterday, you might have caught me talking to a netball player from All Cannings near Devizes, whose photo of her mid-game has been picked up and will be used for a national campaign to try and get more women into sport. This Girl Can was launched by Sport England earlier this year and Ella Harding came in to talk about her experience of getting back into sport and what she thought of the campaign. And I think that the TV commercial was incredible. I think it really did encourage so many women to just get back to sport. I mean, the campaign covered every kind of woman from every walk of life, big, small, kind of fit, unfit, and I think it's inspired so many people. Our club has had a massive influx because of that campaign. What is it about seeing... A, it's a brilliantly cut commercial, <laughs> but you make the point that it's not your classic sportswoman. This is not Jess... Ennis, we're seeing these are <laughs> these are really normal-looking women, some of all ages and of all sizes, getting hot and sweaty. <laughs> and yet, there's something about that that makes you want to put your trainers on and do it. How does that work? I think it means that you can fit because they're doing it and and they fit in. I think you know we're all mums and we all work full time and we're all tired, but to get out and have some me time with people like yourselves and it's just it's brilliant. Ella Harding there from All Cannings Near Devices on the campaign that she's now fronting with her picture playing netball. But the This Girl Can campaign isn't the only thing that seems to be gaining traction in the sporting world at the moment when it comes to breaking down stereotypes of women in sport. A recent issue of Women's Running magazine features a plus-size model on the cover instead of that usual image that you'd be presented with of a, of a live, super-fit woman. Now, does this make a difference, I wonder, to the number of women taking up sport? Does it make it seem more accessible? Is it actually breaking down the stereotypes? Here to answer this is Shona Watt, co-owner of JB Personal Training based in Swindon and founder of Run JB, which does encourage all women to have a go at running. Now, Shona, you specialise in this area, training women in sports. So what do you think of the, the campaign This Girl Can? Is it making a difference? Absolutely. We were so, so chuffed when we saw the This Girl Can campaign come out because it, it resonates so well with the message that we've been trying to sort of put forward in the last... We've been um, in this business now for about 10 years and uh, this, this is so overdue. Um, in, the, in, in the gyms, in the sort of mainstream gyms, there's so many pictures of body beautiful models. They probably don't even exercise, um, you know, in the way that they're being used to promote. But um, this is, these aren't real people, you know. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've got to get more images of, of real women actually doing real exercise. And you are going to get a bit sweaty, you know. You're, you're not going to look um, picture perfect by the end of your workout. That is a good thing. You should be proud of a beetroot face. You know, it should be seen as a badge of honour, not something to be ashamed about. So, yeah, This Girl Can, absolutely fantastic campaign. And uh, it's, it's just so good to be sat, um, you know, watching television and seeing those uh, uh, sort of marketing campaigns come on. It's it's really fantastic. And I really hope it encourages more more women to um, get out there and do their thing um, exercise-wise. It, it is such a contrast, isn't it, to, to those images we're so used to seeing. That TV ad, as you say, hot, sweaty, beetroot face, it's got it all. It's kind of no holds barred. What do you think of the cover of this magazine? I've got it on the screen here. This is the women's running cover. What do you think of, of, of the image on the front of there? Just describe it. Well, this is a woman. I think she's actually a plus-size model. She's American. I think her name's Erica Schenk. And uh, that, finally, an image of a woman, a real woman running on the cover of Women's Running magazine, one of the most prominent um, running magazines out there. That could be a member of our running club, yeah? Th these are real women. Let's not forget... You know, it's almost more normal in this... It is more normal in this country now to be overweight than not overweight. You know, these. this is the fact. This is the state we're in now. And, you know, you've got to start somewhere. Mm. If, if you're trying to tackle your weight, nutrition's very important, but so is exercise. And running, ultimately, is one of the best ways to lose weight, but you've got to start at the beginning. You know, you don't become um, an excellent runner overnight, so... Yeah, let's see more images of these women sort of out there getting started and um, progressing towards a, a healthier lifestyle. Yeah, you make a really interesting point there about the, the changing ratio in our own sort of society of people who are overweight to those who 
who are not, because if you were to exclude people who were overweight from ever taking up sport, of course, it would just be an ever-diminishing people who, who ended up doing it. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's so many scare stories out there about how running is bad for you, how it's bad for your knees and so on. It's simply not true. Running with bad technique can be damaging. Running in the wrong footwear um, can be damaging. But if you do it in the right way, um, with uh, proper advice, if you, most importantly, don't try to do too much too soon, that's a very common mistake. If you progress and build up gradually on something like the Couch to 5K programme that you may have heard from, then there's absolutely no reason to fear getting back into exercise. And running is such an accessible way of doing it. You literally just have to put, a, put on your trainers and go outside your own front door. Many women, especially if they're mothers, are, you know, heavily time constrained. And so it's a really efficient way of, of just making those first steps towards a, a healthier lifestyle. Have you seen any difference in the years that you've been in this area? Uh, the number of people and the type of people coming forward to have a go? I know it's only anecdotal, but do you see more women who are middle-aged, very yep. busy, not in great shape, prepared yep. to have a go? Absolutely, and um, you can see this. I mean, I think that the actual editor of the Women's Running magazine herself actually referred to this point that you only need to look at all the events out there, and it's not just running, it's also very evident in triathlon events that we participate in as well. All shapes and sizes are now getting involved. And, uh, you know, we're, with our running club, Run JB, we're trying to differentiate ourselves by um, being very inclusive to these, these sorts of women who are a little bit a bit scared, you know, when, when they get started. You know, it's, it's natural, it's human nature. Um, you know, the, it, the, there's fear of judgment, there's fear of, you know, will I be good enough? You know, people, will people judge how good I am? How Will people judge how I look? Um, will people judge the fact that I'm just taking some quality me time rather than just should be looking after the kids at home or whatever? And, um, you know, that's what's so great about, you know, running in a group because you get that safety in numbers. You know that you can fit in. These are people like you. And, um, yeah, you know, with, with the support of the community, and we've got such a supportive, fantastic community going on now with, with Run JB. Um, it makes such a difference and, uh, you know, we've had so many success stories. It's, it's just fantastic. It, it genuinely can be life-changing running. It really, really can. And, um, yeah, this girl can, you know, if it encourages more women um, to, to get started, absolutely fantastic. How, how would you cope with someone who came out for the first time, pulled their trainers on and, and had a go, when they reach that kind of somewhere between five and ten minutes when you suddenly think, I'm about to die. Everything, <laughs> everything in your body is going, why are we running? And you, you can't breathe and your head's spinning and you feel sick. And you've got to try and persuade these people, this is great, it'll change your life. Oh, yes, oh, yes. No, listen, I mean, you, it, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. That's the first thing. You know, if, if, if you're trying to get your body to do something that it fundamentally has not tried to do for a long time, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. That doesn't mean it has to be painful. Pain isn't a good thing. Discomfort's fine in moderation, yeah? But first of all, you know, you're going to be challenging yourself, yeah? That's ultimately the whole point. You have to do that to get the body to adapt and get stronger. So yeah? at what point do you feel good about it? When you get that massive endorphin rush at the end. And, and let's not be, you know, you have to approach it sensibly. We don't get people to come off the couch and, and suddenly run for 10 minutes nonstop. That's not how it works. 90 second running intervals is where the Couch to 5K programme begins. And if you take that steadily enough, so you don't try to go off too fast, that's a very classic mistake, people try to get off, go off too fast, then, you yes, you, you'll be a little bit out of breath, but you certainly shouldn't feel nauseous. That comes later when, when you've done your first 5K and we, we deliberately do fart look sessions. That's a whole uh, other uh, discussion in itself. <laughs> you might, you might it's a Swedish a, word. It's think, not rude, honest. You might need to come for a second <laughs> interview to cover that, but, I think. But no, right at the beginning, you just have to make sure that you start at a realistic pace so that you don't get um, to that point where your head's spinning um, and you just gradually progress and build it up in a safe way. Why isn't there a campaign like this for men? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. I think... Um, Clearly, I mean, this is government back. This is a Sport England campaign. Um, men are very different um, beasts. Well, I'm talking to one now. You, you probably give More me an insight less. into this. In our experience, uh, men are sort of less um, social creatures when it comes to exercising. They tend to go solo a little bit. Um, maybe their egos are slightly bigger than uh, than women, perhaps. Oh, no, just generalising here, obviously. No, 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 uh, no specifics. Um, and so. 
if if they're struggling with exercise, I think they're less likely to maybe admit it to their peer group, perhaps. Right. Um, they're maybe more likely to, to go it alone till they get to the point where they're confident enough that they can enter events and, and so on. But we specialise in women, so yeah. your, your insight would be interesting. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you think? I think um, you're right, because when I've done uh, exercise that requires me going out into the into the pub members of the public, like running, I did run a marathon a few years ago. Fantastic. So I had to do a lot of training for that, always on my own. Don't want to run with anyone else. I just, I, just wanna, I want to run away from built-up areas. <laughs> I really don't want people to see me have to go through that. Um, right, I've got two. I've, you, you, you're here for an, uh, another minute or two. I've got two more very important questions. The first is my production team are constantly mocking me for having a rowing machine, which, oh. when, which when I use, I it tells me how many calories I've burned. Right, the 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 bike machine that my wife and my kids use, they can do ten minutes on, and it says they've burned like a hundred calories. If I row, basically, Henley, do the entire regatta, it feels like, I yeah. am absolutely exhausted, <laughs> and the computer tells me I've burned, like, 25 calories. Which is harder, the rowing machine or the bike? Say rowing machine. <laughs> well, obviously... You cannot generalise too much because it depends how much effort you're putting in. I'm so putting in a lot of effort It's here. quite possible to use a rowing machine and actually make it easier than using a bike. However... I'm not doing that! However... The rowing machine of all the cardiovascular machines in a gym is the one that I would recommend people to use because it's using the whole body. Yeah, it's using your upper body and the lower body it combined. Really it's really good for the glutes, largest muscle in the body. Um, and if you're actually giving it proper effort, then yes, you will burn a lot more calories using a rowing machine Shona, than a you, static bike. If you could see my beetroot face, you'd say I'm putting in a lot of effort. It's not, <laughs> That's I'm, good. That's a good thing. The level of swearing of that alone should face. tell you how much effort I'm putting into that. <laughs> Final thing then, if people are listening and they want to maybe take that first step in those old trainers, what should they do? Well, if they're local to Swindon, um, we run Couch 5K courses uh, every three months. So the, the current one is on its third week. The next one starting is uh, the first week of October. So have a look at our website. That's www.jbpersonaltraining.com or simply Google um, Beginners Running um, Swindon and you'll, you'll find details of our next course. Shona Watt, thank you very much for coming in. Co-owner of JB Personal Training based in Swindon. Last time uh, Shona was here, Alex was doing the show and he was forced to do some exercise. <laughs> so quite happy that didn't happen. Should not I got somebody at home